All right. We are back for another Friday financial wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I am doing awesome. You have no idea how much I look forward to these discussions. So thank you for the weekly update. It's it's a lot of fun for me. Same. I feel a little behind. Uh, this is for May the 24th, 2024. I fell behind on daily financial news and I feel like I've been catching up all week. I can't believe it's already the end of the week. Let's get right into it. The Fed, Fed speak. What happened this week with the Fed and what what was he speaking about? <laughs> yeah, so this week, Monday, Tuesday, really no economic data to speak of, but we did have at least seven Fed speeches from diff seven different Fed speakers. And essentially, my takeaway from all seven speakers were rates are not going up. Uh, we are at terminal rate. We need more validation that inflation is falling. They are comfortable holding longer than expected. Um, I would argue that a lot of these Fed speakers were actually rather dovish. Basically, what they're saying is last week's CPI, which you and I talked about coming in lower than expected, they're leaning into. Because if you recall, the previous eight or nine inflation readings were ugly. Yep. So I feel this is a little premature, I guess, in my opinion. They seem to be de declaring victory. They're kind of calling Q1 an outlier, and they're kind of banking on April, which which is a risky move, in my opinion. But yeah, all Fed speeches were, you know, we're comfortable where we are, a few more months. They still expect to do cuts this year, which I can't believe they keep saying. But yeah, Fed speak generally this week were, you know, higher for longer, but but cuts are coming was kind of my takeaway. Higher for longer, but cuts are coming. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So Let's talk about, so what, talk about to Fed speak versus our next topic, Fed minutes. What are the Fed minutes? Explain that for a new viewer, listener. And yeah. then what happened this week with the Fed minutes? This is a good catch. I'm glad you brought this up because the Fed speak again, Monday, Tuesday is very current. Fed minutes are essentially a summary of their meeting from six weeks ago. So again, the meeting six weeks ago was pre- April CPI. So they were still in the throes of eight or nine bad inflation prints. And Fed minutes actually said something like multiple participants are open to the idea of going higher. That was an important thing, right? You've heard me talk about yeah. this. I wish they would make that threat. And apparently in the last Fed meeting, again, pre-CPI, where they now appear to be claiming victory, they were like, you know what? We may have to hit them one more time. Now again, it wasn't it wasn't all of them. They said multiple participants, which to me means probably 3, maybe 4. And again, I think it's important for the Fed to talk about going higher. I mean, especially in the throes of eight bad inflation prints. Right. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, the Fed minutes um were concerning, but again, more recent Monday, Tuesday, again, they they that, that seems to be ages ago. They they're now happy with where they are. Wow. Well, I guess we just have to keep our ear to the ground and uh, keep watching our daily financial news. Let's let's keep going. So Jamie Dimon, he's a hero of yours, a hero of mine. Who is he for a new listener, new viewer? And what was Jamie Dimon talking about this week? Yeah, Jamie Dimon is largely to believe the best banker on the planet. He is, of course, the CEO of JP Morgan. Interestingly enough, also this week, Jamie Dimon hinted that uh, retirement may be closer than people think. Uh, in the stock market, and the stock fell 4% that day. So, you know, what is a good CEO worth? Apparently 4%, uh, but I digress. What Jamie Dimon said in his speech on Wednesday was uh, stagflation uh, is the worst possible outcome. Stagflation is more likely than people give credit. He said that you would probably wish for a hard landing Verse stagflation, which is actually something Charlie Munger said before his passing. Yeah, uh, you would, you would, you would much rather have a hard landing than stagflation. The, the Fed can't win with stagflation. The only thing that fixes it is time and pain. A recession can be fixed by the Fed. Um, and then lastly, the last thing that Jamie Dimon said is, you know, the Fed may may have to hit rates one more time, meaning go up. So Jamie Dimon is talking about the Fed potentially going higher. So. Um, I think it's important because, again, something Jerome Powell said in the last meeting was he doesn't see the stag or the flation. 
I fear that quote may turn into transitory because I think Jamie Dimon's right. Stagflation is the worst possible outcome and more likely than people think. So I think he's right again. Very, very interesting. Very interesting time. So again, higher for longer and even maybe a rate increase. Possible. I mean, Jamie Dimon's talking about it. Again, I don't think anybody thinks it's likely, but that's not the point. The point is it's possible. It's a possibility. Right. And that's important. We're not through the woods. Yeah. I mean, how could you know, right? Right. Why why declare victory early? That just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I want to just, again, digress a little bit in that, you know, I'm talking to a friend yesterday and I'm underwriting a deal and I'm like, dude, we don't know what interest rates are going to be in September. They could be 8%. (laughs) Seven and a half percent. They could be six and a half percent. You yeah. just don't know. You just don't know. It's such a weird time. So yeah. let, let's continue. PMI services and manufacturing. What tell me break that down for the viewer. Break that down yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, this was an important reading that came out Thursday morning. Um basically we get what's called a flash report each each month from the service side of the economy and the manufacturing economy. Now, the numbers that they report are, frankly, irrelevant to the average consumer. What is important is expectations and actuals, and is it above or below 50? Below 50 means shrinking, contracting. Above 50 means expanding. So what happened? We are a service-based economy, so we'll go there first. Service estimate was to be 51.8, so slightly expanding. Actual, 54.8. Big B. Think economy stronger than people think. All right. How about manufacturing? Clearly, manufacturing has to be in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was estimated that manufacturing would post a 50, meaning it didn't contract or grow. Actually, 50.9. So even manufacturing is growing slightly. This is important, right? For the folks that are calling a recession, it's pretty hard to have a recession when both services and manufacturing are growing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, on top of that, we'll throw in weekly unemployment claims, which were not in our show notes. Those were also down this week, right? I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we called out 232. It was like, oh, where'd that number come from? Well, now we're back down to 215. So again, back to that low 200 number. So the ever guest. Uh, economy exploding recessionary doesn't appear to be happening when manufacturing and services are both expanding. That's, it just doesn't seem possible. Very interesting. Very interesting. So again, almost pointing back to the, maybe that stagflation. I mean, it feels like, I mean, very yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. Stagflation, rolling recession. Uh, I, I, at this point, I think it's either stagflation or rolling recession. Yeah. I think these, I think everybody Every armchair economist just wants it to be like the last recessions. And I can't believe it can be, right? We pumped $9 trillion into the economy and that stuff is still out there sloshing around. So to think we're going to have some epic collapse doesn't make, doesn't seem likely to me. Doesn't interesting. Very interesting. Just a whole new, a whole new economy, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm paying attention, man. I'm paying attention. Let's, Let's continue. Let's talk about something that's more familiar for everybody here. Let's talk about existing home sales. What did you see this week? Yeah, existing home sales, I got wrong this week. I thought existing home sales would go up month on month. The experts thought it would go down and the experts were right. I don't remember the exact numbers because those came out on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, Basically, they were expecting, I think, 4.2. I was expecting under that. It came in slightly uh, above or came in, I'm sorry, reverse. I was expecting existing home sales to go up. My my apologies. They were expecting them to go down and they were right. So I, I you know, swing and a miss for me. I actually, when I thought about it, I'm like, you idiot. You've been telling everybody interest rates matter. And why is that important? It's because in April, which was the report, rates were at seven and a half. Right. And seven and a half, as we've learned, kills demand. It's a breaking point. It's, yep. It's a breaking point. So I got that wrong. I, 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 I was looking at current rates, which were seven, not remembering April was seven and a half. So existing home sales disappointed uh, this month and actually shrank. So we're still below 4.2. Interesting. And 
I mean, what is your thought kind of going forward, finishing the year, right? I know it's, we're almost mid-year, right? It's almost yeah. June. Um, your thoughts, I mean, do we end up at plus or minus 4.1, 4.2? What's the over-under for you? I, my, my guess is we complete the year, right, in totality sub 4.25, so under 4.25. And again, yeah. we're we're almost through the spring selling season. Yep. Right. You know, usually it's Mother's Day, you know, yep. kind of the, the end. So, you know, we're maybe it's going to be Father's Day this year, but hey, it's it the spring selling season is almost over. Uh yeah. So yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. So yeah, and existing it still home still continues is, to be weird. Feels weird, weird, right? Weird, weird. Yes. Yeah. Weird. Let's talk about new home sales. What did you see this week in new home sales? Yeah, new home sales also disappointed. Right. We have seen builders really step in and buy down rates and really kind of, quote unquote, meet the market. Uh, well, they 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 were down four point seven percent month on month, down seven point seven percent year on year. New home sales were a big disappointment. Is this I, I actually think what we're suffering through is a product mix. I think the builders have in their pipeline the wrong product. They still have the McMansions and the big stuff yeah. when they should be oriented to first time home buyers. That is something they will fix over time as developments complete and they go lower. But yeah, new home sales also disappointed. Again, rates matter, right? It's more expensive to buy a rate from seven and a half to five than it is from six and a half to five. Uh, so yeah, even new home sales disappointed uh, this month. So yeah, big, big time. Rates matter, folks. Rates matter. I, I don't know if it's just my own um, noticing and awareness or not, but I swear all of a sudden, Every day in my email, I'm getting emails from the new subdivisions, the new home builders, talking about promotions, cooperative commissions, things of that. So I've seen that too. Yeah, I didn't see that for that was like for years. I haven't seen it, and all of a sudden now it's happening. So very interesting. Let's continue. Joseph Wang. Yeah, so, who is what he? Is and the, what what happened this week with Joseph? Yeah, one of the things that I'm doing is I've created this ORAT uh, one rental at a time school community, and I'm trying to bring trying to kind of smash together uh, great contributors like Joseph Wang and others with my community, really providing access, right? A lot of our discussions like this one are one-on-one -on -one and recorded and then published. I wanted to create a community where I provided access, where my community could ask questions and be a part of it. And, you know, conversations like the one with Joseph Wang is an example of what is coming. Uh, also, what we're going to be doing is in the school community, once we get to 100 students, I think we're at 34, 35 today, we're going to start restricting content. One of the things that on YouTube that I've learned and been told is I produce too much content, right? I produce five videos a day. It yeah. kills the algorithm. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to withhold some content from YouTube and only, only put it in school. I'm going to allow experts and millionaires uh, to schedule meetings and help people. So the school community is going to be a place where we provide more care. It's the only place I will do live streams. I cannot do live streams of Q&A on YouTube. I just get too much hate and, and doomers and all of that. So uh, Joseph Wang, the Fed guy, is a sample of something that will only be on school going forward. Uh, he is the gentleman that at six months ago called the crash up which I didn't think was possible, but he was right. Uh, we talk about the crash up continuing. We talk about consumer behavior. We talk about interest rate cuts. It was a wonderful conversation and uh, a sample of what will be only available in school in a very short window. It is on YouTube today because we are under 100 students, but probably by the end of the month, maybe first week of June or so, that kind of conversation will only be on school. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's... I just want people to know what's coming. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. And I want to say, too, to the viewer, right? So a couple things is that um, go check it out. S-K-O-O-L, school. And then they would just basically look it up. One, one rental, rental at, at a time. time. You got it. I love it. I love it. Check it out, folks. Let's continue. Our friend, Jamil, Jamil Damji. What happened this week? And share us your insights this week from Jamil. Yeah, so you and I were part of Brian Pineda's event. We were there. We we saw Jamil and Pace on stage. And Jamil shared a little bit about how hard the last year was. I reached out to him shortly after that event, and we finally got to have that conversation. And, and we had a heart-to-heart, -heart, right? He shared just how rough the last year was. And um, he's really on a mission to get people to realize that 
you know, it's not it's not about all the awards and all the recognition and all the fame. If you're not taking care of, you know, what's at home, bad stuff can happen. And he shared a real important story is his daughter uh, finally got on social media. I think she's 15 or, or thereabouts. Uh, and Jamil reached out to her and said, hey, what do you think of dad's life? Right. You know, Jamil travels, right? He lives out loud. He's in five different cities, is on big stages. And his daughter said something like, It's fun for you to go all these places, but you never come here. Just wow. knife to the heart, right? Yeah. And Jamil talked about that. And you know, you and I have been helping people for decades, Ty. I told Jamil that I think 95% of the people I talk to say they're doing real estate investing for their family. Right. It's it's almost like yeah. a broken record. But Jamil, he said the same thing. Jamil's like, I did all of this stuff for my family. But when you looked at my calendar, where was the fam? Yeah. And I'm like, oh. So uh that conversation uh is up on YouTube uh Friday. Again, that is a sample of some content that will only live on school in the not too distant future. Um, but I just I just thought that was such an eye-opening discussion. Somebody that would be deemed wildly successful. Yeah. Uh, kind of admitting that, you know what? Not so much. So uh, shout out Jamil for just being open and vulnerable. It was it was a pretty great conversation. We love you, Jamil. And I want to just yes. say that, um, you know, there, there's a saying, people say, well, people vote with their dollars, right? But there's even another level. We also vote with our time and how we spend our time right to what's important to us. So, um, man, talk about it. Impactful. I'm going to go definitely. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that that was up, so I'm going to check it out. So that's wow. Okay. Let's continue. Let's, let's talk about Dan bird. Who is Dan bird and what happened this week with Dan bird? Yeah. So Dan bird is a sample of one of my millionaires that come back each week. We speak 10 AM every Sunday. He is, uh, the stock guy. He's the chart guy. He is somebody that's been right. Ridiculous amount of time with, uh, stocks and the market. Um, and he is going to be the next school session. So this is uh, coming out on Friday morning. Uh, he is going to be speaking to the school community at 10 a.m. Pacific on Sunday. Uh, we will go through our normal thing. Uh, we will likely take questions. We will uh, interact with the audience. We will we will answer all the questions that we really can't get to. And uh, this is just the next recording uh, that the school community will have uh, have access to. And again, what I'm trying to do is every week, I'm going to open up one of my millionaire conversations to the school community, at least one. And we're going to start this Sunday with Dan Bird. Uh, last week was on or Kelly week before that was uh, uh, Dion and Matt. So um, pretty cool. I, this is a lot of fun for me to, to see the community of 10, 20, 30,000 merged with millionaires who they, they feel like they know. Well, now I'm going to make sure they know each other. I love it. I love it. So this is folks, we are progressing one rental at a time is growing. Um, and also too, I love it, Michael, that you're just figuring out more ways, better ways to deliver and take care of your audience, take care of the community. So I love it. Yeah. Love it's it. really fun. School allows me to do what I'm already doing and invite my community in. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's, yeah. it's really cool. I've got to say too, that compared to Facebook, and I know we've talked about this a little bit, but for somebody who's new to the conversation, the school, what's cool is it has the, some of the components like Facebook and mm -hmm. where you can comment and share and questions and things like that. But also the way that all the content is organized is such a really cool thing. So yeah. I love it, Michael. Yeah. Very cool. Let's, let's continue. So Omar, Omar Altakari, he's very well known, big part of Think Media. He has his own brand, which is the video department. What happened this week with Omar and maybe share some insights from this week? Yeah. So Omar and I uh, are friends. Uh, we've actually talked a lot in Vegas. I've been on his show. He's been on mine. And Omar just released a video. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, basically imploring Gen X and baby boomers to create channels or social media present around their experience. Omar in that video talked about there's too many 20 year old life coaches too many people want to be social media influencers. And he was basically imploring Gen X and baby boomers to share their wisdom, share their passion, share their history. And he calls it bliss. 
Because if you're a 20 year old trying to create a social media presence, you need the money. If you're a Gen X or baby boomer and you want to share classic cars or, you know, whatever, you can create a video and you don't need to be monetized. You don't need to extract revenue. You can do it just because you love it. And if you do that over time and build a community, uh, you're going to be, you're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be truly impactful. And the reason Omar is in his 60 minute discussion, he actually talked about me one rental at a time. He talked about how creating content and then a book and then this and then that. And he's like, Hey, other people like Michael should do this. So I reached out to him and he agreed to be a part of the school community on Monday at 8 AM, which I think is Memorial day, but right? I think it's a yeah. holiday. Yeah. So no excuses for not coming. If you're in my school community, if you've ever thought about, if you have a YouTube channel, you have to attend. You have to attend. And I've already said it. This is going to be the first video that only lives on school. This video will not make it to YouTube. It will not be generally consumable. I am going to have this 60-minute conversation where we take questions, we have ideas, we brainstorm, we bring value. I've even opened it up to Omar's community so we can merge our communities together and we can just grow and provide value. So Omar is the next scheduled school participant. The video will only be available on school and that is 8 a.m. Monday morning, Memorial Day. So no excuses if you have a job. I love it. Folks, you need to be there Monday morning. A couple of things um, in the show notes, we will post the location and link for school. Okay, so this is very, very, this is very clear. Folks, obviously we appreciate all the viewers, all the listeners, please subscribe, comment, share on YouTube. And the real call to action here today is if you want to get deeper and more involved in the one rental at a time community, now's the time. Get signed up for school. It's pennies. It's, mm -hmm. su it's such great value so that you can be connected not just to Michael, but the entire community. Plus, you're going to have exclusive content that's only hosted in the school community as well as all the interaction. Michael, any parting words? No, uh, just I just love what we're doing. Uh, it's it's um, it really does feel like we're we're truly helping people, and school is just going to be that next platform that allows us to go deeper with the folks that are in the community. So I'm super excited by what we're doing. I love it, Michael. Thank you for all that you do. Have a great weekend. Thank you. See you Monday. Yep.